If there's anything weird in this video, don't even tell me, I already know. Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a taking a seat with Shelby, where I usually take a seat on the ground and talk to you guys about what's on my mind, but right now I'm just going to take a seat on a chair in front of my backdrop, which kind of defeats the purpose of the title. I mean, I am still taking a seat, I'm just in a chair, which everybody does in every video ever. But that's all right. The point of this video is to talk to you guys about what's been going on in my life and what I have on my mind. So first, I just wanna talk about how I haven't posted a video in two weeks. So for Christmas, I got a laptop. I asked for a laptop and lighting for Christmas. So, I tried to film two videos within the past two weeks, but both times something went wrong. Basically, my computer was saying there wasn't anything connected to it to import footage from. But there was. So today I was doing homework. I was laying in bed with a headache trying to read Huckleberry Finn and thinking that I have not done anything fun in like two weeks. I know I haven't posted a video in two weeks and I like to film videos. So here I am. Guys, I have not had this much luck in like ever. Like first of all, I found the cord that connects my camera to my laptop. Then I decided I couldn't film until I figured out how to watch myself on my laptop, which is right there by the way. But eventually I found this article with somebody who had the same camera as I have and it like opened up it like it taught me how to do it okay this just made me so happy it like brought me it brought the life back into me really after all this homework I've been doing so that's the update on how my YouTube channel is like going to be for now on I'm going to have all this stuff for now on and that's really exciting because I get to start filming makeup tutorials and I can film both of the videos that I tried filming these past two weeks that didn't work out that brings me to another subject I want to have a little story time with you about something that happened in December so we had a theater convention in December. That's just what I'm going to call it. I'm not going to get real into it. There were, I think, 6,000 people there, and I went with my troop of, like, 40, I think. I was rooming with these two other girls, and one of them I shared a very interesting experience with. So we were watching a play. This is over the weekend. We did a lot of things over this one weekend. It was very go, go, go. And I was watching this play. It was great. Actually, it wasn't a play. It was a musical. Guys, I'm not gonna lie. I slept during it. At the end of this musical, everybody was clapping and sobbing. Oh my gosh. And of course, I have like no idea what had happened. I mean, I watched the second act like wide awake. But because I missed the first act, I was a little confused. During that um, standing ovation, I happened to have had my phone in my lap. And when I stood up, it happened to have fallen off of my lap. As you know, that's how gravity works and stuff. So everybody was clearing out. I was very distracted. There was a lot of stuff going on. Before I even got out of the auditorium, I realized I didn't have my phone. I was like, oh my gosh, I think it was sitting in my lap and I don't know where it is, so I'm going to go back right now. So I take my friend and we turn back around and go back to where we're seating. And at this point, pretty much everyone in this section is filed out. And my phone is not there. So for the next day and a half, I don't even know when this happened, the whole rest of the convention though, we spent looking for my phone. So I go back to my hotel room and guess what I find out? The other girl that I'm rooming with, one of them, lost her phone too that day and couldn't find it either. We were in this together, let me tell you that. We spent the next day and a half going to Lost and Found after every workshop that we went to. We walked around and we're like looking at people's pockets, not gonna lie, freaked some people out. We were asking other groups that were there, other, we went to the janitors and we're asking them, even though this place is like so huge. One janitor literally gave us a lecture about how we're old enough that we need to start being responsible and do we realize how much our phones cost and our parents and this and that and we're gonna be in college and like I don't know and we're like look lady this is why we put away our dignity to come up to you and ask you the one janitor out of like a hundred if you happen to find our two phones no Everybody else is pretty supportive about it, but like there was no way we were gonna find our phone. 6,000 kids. We were pretty distraught. Um, I don't know what else to say about that. We laugh cried, like hysterically laugh cried, and then it was time to go and we left without our phone. So let's talk about the takeaway from this experience. One thing I learned, I noticed that I went through the five stages of grief. What are the five stages of grief? Denial, reaching for my phone, wanting to like take pictures, all that stuff was still happening after I lost it. Anger. How the heck could 
anybody take our phones? What is wrong with people? Like all of that stuff. Bargaining. I don't know that this happened like how you would expect it. It definitely came in the form of like... Maybe if we go through all of this effort to try to find it, our parents won't be so mad because we really tried. I don't know. I was doing pretty good about it. When I first got home, I went a solid like four days without my phone and I was fine. We were still calling the hotel, so maybe that's why. But I didn't really miss it that much. Like it was, it was okay. But the depression hit after about four days and lasted for the rest of that week. It was just like replaying all the stuff that was on my phone that I was never gonna see again, you know what I mean? And then finally, after about a week, I got to acceptance, but I'm not gonna lie, when I got my new phone, I didn't, I wasn't ready. I just wasn't really ready to move on, you know? So moral of the story, it is possible, it can happen, no matter how much you think that you would never let go of your phone and it's always in your hand. It is very possible for you to make mistakes. So always have everything backed up somewhere. Please, this is your warning from me because I care about you. And in general, if you don't have to be holding your phone, don't be, okay? I realized after this that we all rely on our phones so much to like a ridiculous extent. Even if you don't think that you do, like think about it. Think about how often you're actually on your phone, whether it's just to check your time or you're just bored and you wanna pass the time. You don't realize how much you were on your phone until you don't have your phone anymore and then you have all this free time. But as a human race, I just feel like it's getting to a point where somebody needs to stop and like make a change and I feel that that needs to start with social media for sure. So I made a change guys, I did that with myself but like I've told people about what I'm doing so maybe it'll affect somebody else. I deleted Instagram and Twitter about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago? Like, I don't even know. I didn't delete my accounts. I still have them. And in fact, I still have them on my old phone. So I do still get on them occasionally. I get on them maybe once or twice a day, but that is still way less than I used to. Even if it was just like updating your Twitter feed for a second, like, and just looking through some of them, just for a few seconds to not be bored for a few seconds, that is too many seconds that you could be looking past the love of your life walking by or some lady's about to die and you're gonna miss it because they're checking your phone. I felt like social media was holding me back. I used it as a way to procrastinate and plus it just wasn't making me happy to go through Instagram or Twitter and see what other people are doing all the time. Like I don't think that makes anybody happy but I think people do it anyways because they think they're doing it for themselves. I strongly believe that if it doesn't make you happy and you're spending that much time doing it or even if you're not spending that much time doing it, if something doesn't make you happy, you shouldn't be doing it. So for me personally, I wasn't even posting photos that often, okay? And that wasn't really what it was all about for me anyways. It was more just about I felt like I had to know what other people were doing just because it was my duty as a teenager to keep up with social media. But that was stupid because actually going through social media, the act of swiping through stuff, was not bringing me joy and I think you guys need to consider whether it's bringing you joy either because if it's not, it's okay to put it down or to stop getting on it. When I deleted those two apps, a world of time opened up to me. And I didn't miss the two apps at all, I'm not gonna lie, like I don't miss them. Maybe that's because I still check them like once a day, but when I do, I don't feel like I need to go through everything. My point is, I felt like social media was holding me back in my life, and now that I deleted it, I feel like it's putting me ahead of other people. And I want to inspire you to do the same thing. Next time you're on Instagram or Twitter or Snapchat or Facebook or whatever, Ask yourself, does this bring me joy? Am I happy doing this? Do I feel like I should be doing something else that I don't want to do? Is that the only reason I'm on here right now? Because if so, you're procrastinating. I just, I want you guys to ask yourself that question and I'm gonna move on now. Now, if you'll notice, I only deleted Instagram and Twitter, but I kept Snapchat. Snapchat makes me so happy. And I'm just gonna be honest, the only people Snapchats who I watch and like thoroughly enjoy watching and expect to enjoy watching when I'm about to watch them is Desi Perkins and Lester Lux. Watching their Snapchat stories at the end of a school day revives me. I could have had a horrible day, but I know that they will be there for me. I can't even... I'll put down below what their Snapchats are. If you like watch them on YouTube, then you'll definitely like their Snapchats. I feel like I have more inside jokes with them than I do with some of my friends. Are you guys modeling or... 
So thank you so much to Dusty and Katie. The last thing I want to say is thank you to Ethan and all of you guys who have come over to check out my channel because of Ethan. You know who you are. I hope I don't disappoint. I know this video is just like a talking video of me rambling on, but I hope you're okay with that because I want to continue doing them every once in a while. But yeah, that's going to be it for today. If you like this video or these types of videos, don't forget to give them a thumbs up. But other than that, just keep a lookout for all my new stuff with all my new stuff stuff if you know what I mean because I'm really excited about it and I want you guys to be excited about it with me my birthday's coming up this week so so next time I see you guys I will be 17 years old wow but yeah that's gonna be it so thank you guys for watching again and I will see you soon with another video bye